It was, Bui and myself. And um, of course, <laughs> let's transition to the next conversation. President William Ruto at the National Prayer Breakfast yesterday spoke about feeling the pain of the neighbor. If we all feel the pain of what it is that we have to do, then we are alive. But if we feel the pain of others, then we are human beings. I want us to ask ourselves, if we feel the pain of the 3%, then it's because we are alive. But if we feel the pain of the millions of young people who are looking for a job, if we feel the pain of the 7 million Kenyans who live in indignity, in slums, then we are human beings. All right, President William Ruto, yesterday at the National Prayer Breakfast at the Safari Park Hotel. And uh, Senator Veronica Mena, allow me to begin with you because as we said earlier on, at the moment the Finance and Planning Committee of the National Assembly is retreating in Naivasha to look at uh, the feedback they've received from stakeholders, from the members of the public, mm -hmm. and are moving to the next step. If you were to sit at the National Assembly, but also as a member of the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, what would you do with the overwhelming feedback that has come? Uh, you see, the reason why feedback is given is because it needs to enrich the process. So in my view, that feedback will enrich that process. Is that feedback being ignored? No, it is not being ignored. In fact, every person who takes up government would understand very clearly that uh, the purpose of government is to serve the citizens. And the reason why there is even an effort to have a retreat, to have the cabinet minister, and, and, and those who are concerned with the finance bill retreating and discussing is because there is overwhelming feedback that has come from the Kenyan citizens. And mm -hmm. it's important to look at it, look at any valid uh, reasons that may be there to adjust anything that may need to be adjusted. And then that you be considered and taken into account within the finance bill. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to many bills, um, some. Right. It may not appear as though, or politicians sometimes may put it as though it's not being listened to. But every wise politician knows that it's important to listen to the citizens and the voters of this country. And this government is a listening government. If you remember the reason why uh, UD and Kenya Kwanzaa were given the vote by majority of Kenyans, is because they were feeling the pain of what Kenyans were going through. Mm -hmm. And they are still, we are still listening. The president is still listening. The deputy is still listening. And if we will ever have a government that listens to the people, by the way, Sam, this will be it. But what we have been shrouded with is opposition politics which are angled towards settling other scores beyond the finance bill. Because what we have right now is a, is a finance bill which the country cannot do without. But you have heard, as we were taking the beginning of this, starting at the beginning of this show, mm -hmm. the approach taken by Azimio is that reject that finance bill in its totality. So after you reject and it's 30th of uh, June 2023, where are you taking the country? Is there a headway? Is there a light after you reject? And the process is overtaken by the time. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that the government is listening. Uh, those comments are being read. The views are being considered. And I believe uh, they will come up with a good suggestion. And whatever suggestion is brought forth, because a budget finally, we, the government has to raise money. Right. And some we need to teach to give more civic education to our citizens. Government operates on the taxes and the income that comes from the people. Once we understand this, we will be able to have a conversation with citizens to say, government earns from taxes, and it also earns from loans. Right. Now, there is a policy direction, a fiscal policy direction, that has reduced the borrowing. The government is either borrowing or getting the taxes from the people. And that money is needed in order to fund the government. And this is for the services for the people. Right. So what we need to rationalize is how then do we do that taxation? OK. All right. Honorable Silvana Susoro, <clears throat> she says that the government is listening. But you've told us at different times that um, it's a pita. And your work is to make sure that it passes. Um, Deputy President Trigadi Gashagwa says, whatever you do, it will pass. So what listening is happening? That is true, I say, and I still repeat, that whatever I'm given, 
from the majority side as the majority whip <laughs> before the floor of the house will pass. And, and that is my responsibility, ideally. But that really doesn't mean that um, there are no rooms for amendments. But at the stage of having it passed in the floor of the house, and that exactly, that is what I keep saying, at the stage of having it passed in the floor of the house, it must pass as long as I'm sitting in the house, in that <laughs> house. But let me say this, uh, that uh, the process- pa Pass as is? No, 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 I'm saying, as long as I'm sitting in that house, it is my responsibility as the majority whip to make sure that every government uh, business passes. As at the is? stage, no, at the stage I'm given. Because as it is right now, the process is already on, like you've had. There, is, uh, there was public <coughs> participation. Uh, the committee is now, is, is now in Ivasha, of course, reviewing and seeing what members of the public proposed and different sectors and such. They may make amendments and such. Of course, it will get again to the floor of the house. It will go to the first reading. Then we will get to the committee of the whole house. Members will make, will have an opportunity to make amendments at that point. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we'll get to the final part, which will be uh, the, that reading and voting. And of course, at that stage, it is now, it, it will be very critical. It will have been amended. Of course, the panel meeting will have been done and such. And at that particular point, I will make sure that it passes. And that means really, so that is my let responsibility. Let me ask you, <clears throat> are there areas within the conversations you've had, I don't know that you sit in the Finance and Planning Committee, but are there conversations you've had on areas that you might concede based on the feedback? Yeah, yeah, we have had uh, informal mm -hmm. um, agreements or rather informal discussions. Uh, things to do with the content creators, for example, mm -hmm. uh, that the earlier proposal was to have them taxed at 15% of their income. But right now, we need to find a way, and that is part of the discussion that is ongoing in Mumbai. So the, there's in, uh, no argument on the figure now? There isn't. Okay. But it, they must be taxed anyway, but it should be at really pro rata basis. Mm -hmm. Maybe we start at 3% so, so or Second? 4%. There's also uh, the issue that was raised on uh, uh, the, the, the farm inputs, an extension of what defines the farm inputs per se, so that we also do not just have a limited line of farm input, just thinking about fertilizers. There are equipment involved, things to do with the tractors and such mm -hmm. that also help, uh, uh, you know, hasten the process or rather as catalyst in terms of the farming. Mm -hmm. So the discussion is broad and as I said. So, so nothing on housing levy? The housing levy discussion, which is informal, is maybe to create structures, moratorium structures for the employers. And as I say, that is very informal. What does that mean? Like, for example, you really do not want, upon making regulations of the housing, uh, in the Housing Act, because we'll make regulations in terms of the management and such of, that, of such fund, um, you know, we really do not want to ambush the employers, per se, that, you know, instantly, you'll now immediately start paying this. There are some employers, of course, with loan and uh, loans and <coughs> such and other mm -hmm. engagements. So, so there are discussions that are uh, informal uh -huh. to create maybe a moratorium structure. You are given maybe about seven or six months or three months thereabout to restructure yourself, your finances, and uh, remit the amount. So, so the deductions will not happen immediately or they'll happen but not submitted immediately? You know, you asked me what discussions are, we are having, and those are very informal discussions. And at the end of the day, they will come to the floor of the house. What I've told you is the informal at the higher ladder of leadership yeah. that we are all having to make sure we also, <coughs> you know, get to understand what the employers want and the employees and such. Okay. But let me say this also. You know, this housing thing that really every person is discussing about was every political party's agenda in the last general elections campaigns. Including the Azimio coalition. Azimio. Had, uh, you ha it's on record, you actually aired it, when they say it, they'll bring the housing agenda where employers will, did, will pay 1.5% and the employees 1.5%. That was their proposal then. Who, whose but, proposal? Uh, Azimio. It, it's, it's actually on record, Raila Odinga, right honorable Raila Odinga is saying that in political rallies and different serious meetings. And he was saying, you know, housing is a serious thing. And we can play it, of course, I, if you put me to task. Don't, don't okay. know. we'll check exactly. that, don't you worry. So, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is this. Mm. It's, it's really not fair for Azimio right now to disown what they actually believed then, mm -hmm. you know? And, 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 you know, Azimio is a coalition, which also has a, a jubilee. There is a wing of jubilee. No, 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 let's not get into that first. No, no, there's a point I'm trying to drive. That, of course, 
it's on the side of right honorable I mean uh, former president Uhuru Kenyatta this housing agenda was also proposed by Uhuru Kenyatta and Jeremiah Kioni knows this okay. very well and Hon honorable we, sir, I hear you but can you just focus on the finance bill 2023 what I'm saying is this: just hold on, I'll, I'll we, come should, back. we should we should adjust the discussion we should yeah. be having. Yeah. Is is it that the percentage is higher? The three percent is higher, and we now discuss about making it their, according to their proposal, okay. the earlier proposal. Honorable, sorry, you know, a I, maximum I, cap. Just hold on. I asked you about what you're proposing to do. You told me of a moratorium, but you're not specific on what that means. The six months or seven months you're referring to, you're not specific on what it means. But that's fine, Honorable Mboi. So reject without any space for amendments. But then again, so what happens on 1st of July? And don't you think you're, I mean, kicking away an opportunity to really make changes and have the voice of Kenyans represented? Uh, first and foremost, Sam, it's important to note that uh, we have a finance bill. You know, the, when you listen to this conversation, or if we reject what happens, I think the, somebody is imagining the country grinds to a halt. No. There's a finance bill passed in 2022-2023, mm -hmm. which was targeting to raise 2.1 trillion. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular one is uh, proposing to raise 2.57 trillion. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a difference of 470 billion, which is uh, the, 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 bone in, uh, the bone of contention. Because for us, we feel that uh, you know, in raising taxes at a time like this, mm -hmm. when the economy is doing very badly and when people are suffering, is not the right thing. Now, you know, when you listen to this conversation and, um, you know, we, we are being told that uh, we also, as Azimio, may have wanted to do the same program. Maybe what I would like to clear is, state here is that, uh, you know, when Parliament uh, proposes a bill, when a bill is uh, given to Parliament, under Article 10, you have to carry out public participation. Right. And public participation is supposed to inform the final decision. And, 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 and citizens have been out there, you know, unions, uh, individuals, uh, you know, organizations. Memoranda of a thousand has been sent to the, to the committee. And over 90 percent are saying we are uncomfortable with this uh, proposal. Had we been in power, I can tell you that our leader, the right owner, Boraila Molo Odinga, would have listened to the voice of the people mm -hmm. and would have probably shelved that proposal. It is strange that um, this parliament, uh, unfortunately, is under siege. It is actually uh, under capture of the, of, 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 of the deep state. And I'll say this, you've had the discussion here. Public participation has been done. The committee has retreated. But then we are hearing mention of uh, CSS. What are CSS doing in a parliamentary process? Because once it has come, <coughs> the proposals have come from the CS Treasury. They become the, 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 now the property of the House. So the House should be dealing with these uh, as members. But you can see there's... Uh, there's, you there's don't, don't see, you don't, you don't see any then? space for the user department to be... For, for me, for me, let me tell you, they've already participated. Okay. It, it, this started September last year, okay. the, where the different departments uh, were giving their wish lists. Mm. So it started, the, the budget pro you know, making process starts in September the previous year. And people have given their, pro their proposals, they've gone to departmental committees, and uh, now it has come to the floor of the House. They passed, and I've heard uh, Osoro here say about the passage of, uh, of, of, uh, of the budget today. Mm -hmm. uh, those budget estimates, in fact, were passed in... Uh, house that was disorderly, which in fact is also an illegality in itself. Because uh, the minute the speaker says that the house was disorderly, then you cannot be able to transact business in a disorderly house. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I am certain that somebody might go to court and, and challenge those estimates that you have passed. But for me, what I feel is that uh, public participation needs to be done properly and the views of the people should be respected. Mm -hmm. Parliament should be allowed to be independent to carry out its, uh, its, its, its business without, uh, without intimidation. And you okay. see, some of the comments you hear that uh, the majority weep and even some members from Senate that the will, government will never lose. Another one says we will pass it without changing a comma. It means that uh, they are taking Kenyans for a ride and they do not want to listen. And like what uh, Veronica here said, that this is, uh, this is uh, a government that listens. It this does. is a government that does not okay. listen to anyone. You know, you know <laughs> Sam, I'm, I'm no, no, speaking from an insider's view. Let's hear Senator Sifuna first. I'm, I'm looking at the manifesto of Azimio that you referred us to, Honorable Osoro. No, not the manifesto. I have actually a video <laughs> clip that I, if, if you are, permit me, we can have it. Just hold on. Uh, uh, Sam, Just hold on. Let me tell you what I've read. Yes. Uh, yes, they said that there was going to be a public affordable housing scheme. 
But as of the details of implementing that, there's no such information. There, I, can I share with you? No, no. Please go some, ahead. Uh, Senator you know, policy positions mm. are articulated in manifestos, not in video clips. <laughs> there is a manifesto, a document <laughs> that lays out what you're planning to some do. Some don't defend them. Let them two, defend oh, themselves here. Please, yeah. allow me to be heard in silence, Sam. Please, you, you need to protect <laughs> me from this air class. What we want people to understand, Sam, is that you cannot have a conversation about amendments of a, a bill or a proposal when they have already profiled you as a person who cannot give any reasonable ideas. <coughs> you see, one of the most interesting things is that when you hear leaders such as uh, the whip saying, we will pass this thing, wapende wasipende, without uh, alteration of a comma, and I see <coughs> comments on social media sometimes people asking us, where is the Azimi alternative budget? Where would I take that alternative budget to whom? Because mm. every single Kenyan that have, has spoken, including yesterday when Kwame Wino was trying to explain uh, how this housing levy is a bad uh, problem, we, uh, is, is a bad idea, we woke up this morning, he has been labeled an Azimio person. Just because you disagree with this, what they do first is to label you Azimio, then to dismiss everything that you have said because it's Azimio. I have said on this show that personally, mm -hmm. I accept that it doesn't matter if I came with a letter from Jesus himself saying he has sent me to speak to William Ruto. He will not listen to a word that I am saying because they have profiled us as people who are just noisemakers. They say we are the choir that accompanies preaching during church. So it's okay, but <laughs> listen to somebody else. Uh, Sam, if you go through the list of the people who have appeared before this parliamentary uh, committee, it is private sector, it is manufacturers, it is importers, it is unions, it is civil society, it is the church. Mm -hmm. All of these people surely cannot be wrong or sorrow. <laughs> no. And what we are saying is because the court has already pronounced itself on what Article 10 means when it says there has to be public participation. Mm -hmm. it, has, it cannot be a cosmetic exercise for just ticking a box saying, yes, we have done public participation. Mm -hmm. The views of Kenyans must reflect in the final position. And the only way... The views of Kenyans can reflect because we have seen those views. You people have covered those proceedings live. Kenyans have said we reject this thing in total. Now, Sam, I want to discuss something uh, that is very dangerous in our democracy. Separation of powers. You know, separation of powers means vesting of legislative, executive, and judicial power in separate entities. If you decide that today you are going to be a member of the National Assembly, you cannot then be a president or a judge. One of the principles of separation of uh, powers is that personnel, the same people or person should not be allowed to serve more than one branch of government at the same time. If you are the president, <coughs> sit in state house, mm. uh, let treasury do their, uh, their estimates, let them come to parliament. But you cannot stand and say that my members of parliament must do what I say. That makes you a member of parliament. Because but these the people, no, but but I have not himself. named anybody. Please, let me explain the concept I'm explaining mm. here. Some because you, you, you are getting educated for free. <laughs> yeah, you can have the rest <laughs> of the time. Just on the so, yeah. Sam, what happens is, eh, yeah. we get very worried. Mm. When you see somebody occupying the office of a head of state, openly threatening members of parliament, no, 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 no. that we, are, I am waiting to see there, who is this member of parliament who is going to vote against these proposals. Today, I saw regarding Gashagwa saying all members of parliament in Kenya Kwanza are in support of uh, no, this, this proposal. There's just one in Kiambu here, and I appear here at Anyamaza too. That is fettering on the power of, of, uh, of the National Assembly. Okay. And also, you, yeah. you marry it with uh, something I had the, the CS for Interior saying, uh, threatening a judge that even if he released a, a suspect in Shakahola, they would still put him back. That is a government that does not understand the separation of powers. We would wish right. that members of parliament, because the National Assembly is the only organization or organ that is expressed in this document to be representative of the people. Mm -hmm. We in Azimio are saying, don't betray your people. Right. They are saying, don't betray William Ruto. That is not the person <laughs> who elected them. Senator Veronica Maina, yeah. how do you separate those roles and interests for a president who campaigned, told the Kenyans, this is what I want to do, and on its resources to implement that program, uh, how do you make that pitch for the bill neater uh, so, so that you avoid the suspicion that is coming? Uh, I, I will do that in a few minutes. But, and before I do so, let me first say, uh, when Senator Suna talks about uh, that even <coughs> if he came with a letter from Jesus, <laughs> maybe we, I still need to inform him that Jesus' letter is in the Bible. If he can read the Bible every day, 
if you find Jesus' letter, and it has answers for many, many issues, Does including it have my taxation, name that, uh, including, he knows you by your name, no. so he will still, he will still <laughs> answer you. So don't wait for another one written about the finance bill. He's given us the wisdom. That Bible, we even talk about taxation, that uh, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Now that's on a light note. Uh -huh. It will have everything that he would <coughs> need to see. But coming down to uh, the issue of discussion at hand, uh, we must appreciate certain facts. You remember a clip that has circulated from uh, uh, Honorable, former Premier, Honorable Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. regarding the cost of living. And he was declaring when he was in the handshake regime that this cost of living has gone up everywhere, Sam. And I have traveled in a few places. And the cost of goods, the cost of travel, the cost of item has skyrocketed, not just in Kenya. Mm. If you look at the dollar exchange rate right now, there is a very heavy fight in the financial market on, on how the inflation rates have gone up. It's not just in Kenya, but the problem we are having is that uh, with this finance bill, right. it seems it has been used <coughs> as a bridge for a frustration that is being expressed by Azimio. And instead of having a candid conversation with Kenyans <coughs> on why it is necessary for government to have revenue Revenue and government to have some resources to be able to disburse even to the counties for services to be given to the people. We instead have an opposition which says uh, we are going to reject it wholesome. Is that an answer? Some. It is not an answer. Now, if the cost of living, the inflation has gone up across the whole world, everywhere, even in the US, everything is very expensive right now, Sam. But, but Senator Veronica, still on that point, does Let it concern you? Hold on. Does it concern you? You're saying that the inflation rate has been rising, apart yes. from we've seen a bit of slowdown in the last few months. Yes. Does it concern you that VAT on fuel from 8% to 16%, mm -hmm. turnover tax from 1% to 3%, lowering the range to 500,000 shillings, which is about 1,370 shillings a day, day from business. Does it bother you that that is likely to push the cost of living even higher? Let me say this, uh, Sam. Those are the areas that have been uh, flagged by the Azimio. What they have not, not done, let me, me just, let me just, can you allow me Senator, to finish? Allow, it's you are, you're calling people Senator headless, then you are chief headless. But it is not as a meal. Just, you I'll allow me to finish. Is not, Kepsa is no, not as a meal. let me say this. Senator, support, um, what they have not flagged in yeah. this finance bill mm. is that there is a zero rating on grains. Yes. There is zero rating on equipment that is dealing with medical care. There is um, <coughs> removal of taxes and reduction of uh, IDF, you know, the import declaration uh, tax. Mm -hmm. There is uh, a reduction from uh, to 7.5. The, the, the rental income is one that has been reduced to 7.5. Mm -hmm. What does that translate to? The finance bill has tried to balance between what is being asked of uh, the citizen and what is being paid into the government. And there is a need that has been given to recovery of any amount you would want to recover on VAT. Before, it was very difficult for people to recover their input. Once you, you, you had paid into the VAT account, it was difficult for a trader or a business person to recover to what they were claiming from the government. The returns. That, the returns have now been eased up so that it's much easier for, for traders to even make it uh, in business to recover the fund that they need from the government. Those okay. facts are not being told to the public, uh, Sam. Mm -hmm. What is being told to the public is just what is going up. It's a balancing act in that finance bill, Sam. And in so, that so balancing this, act... In specific terms, mm -hmm. if this bill passes at, as it is, on mm -hmm. the 1st of July 2023, mm -hmm. will life be more expensive or cheaper? I wouldn't say it would be more expensive or cheaper, oh, yes. Sam, because <laughs> there is a balance be that has been struck. <laughs> no, you be know, cheaper. for instance, uh, Sam... So it will be um, the same? Le let me say, it could even be the same, but we are not being allowed to have that conversation in a free environment. Because if you look, for instance, on the taxes on imported furniture, it has gone up. Why has it gone up? Because we want to encourage the local industry to now manufacture furniture from within the nation. Okay. All Such right. aspects, uh, Sam, yeah. will definitely uh, make <coughs> trading much easier for the traders who are in Juakali sector. Does that make life harder for the Juakali sector or more difficult? It eases up.
Okay. You will find there is something that has been done on leather to encourage the local industry to invest more in that and to trade more in that. But what we are hearing, Sam, yes. is, a, is an opposition which thinks that government is the one that should be driving the cost of Unga down. Sam, which government in the world has ever given people food every day? Because I've had demand from the opposition, to be honest, that government needs to drive. This Unga must be 50, 50 shillings, 100 shillings. While the request is good, <laughs> but you know, it is just hyping public mood. Okay. Because I've not seen a government, let me finish. Yes. I have not seen a government, even the US itself, giving food to the people on a daily basis and saying your dinner will program. be given here. There's a every welfare day program. To everybody, yes. Every day to everybody. Every month people the receive welfare checks. The problem with Azimio, Sam, yeah. is a, a, an, an act of deception. <laughs> they, they use the politics <laughs> as so promise. deceiving you know, you know, sen and so alluring. Sen sen Senator Maina, I wish you spent time to talk about what is in the finance bill. <clears throat> and uh, Honorable Mbui, so from your reading of the bill, do you see any positives? Uh, you know, some when I listen to uh, Veronica here, it's it's shocking because uh, she's talked about uh, some 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 items that she considers to be positive, and 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 our concern is not any tax that may have been reduced. We have been very clear. We are talking about the issue of the cost of living; it's very high. Mm -hmm. And so, what we are asking is that they don't tax Kenyans more during a period like this. So. What we are dealing with is excessive taxation. Now, when she points out, looks through a 160-page document and finds something hidden there that is uh, probably positive, and then that becomes a topic of discussion, we lose a script. There are so How? many, there are so many items in that uh, in that bill Do that, the uh, that, uh, that and that's what and that's what I want to and that's what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, uh, yes, they have removed uh, from exemption uh, specialized hospitals and construction materials for tourism. Uh, so that's a positive. They've removed 16% VAT on helicopters and uh, aviation industry. Correct. That's a positive. And you know why, Who benefits? Sam? They have Sam? reduced, they have Don't reduced, uh, allow me, <laughs> they have reduced, they've reduced the duty on, uh, on, 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 uh, on, uh, on, on, you know, rent, farm, rent farm income. Inputs. Rent, rent or income. That's a positive. But who's the beneficiary? Again, it is landlords. Farm so inputs. what we are dealing with is the things that are affecting the hustler that you came on a promise on. When you were vying for the elections, you told us that you're going to deal with issues to do with the hustlers. And I mean, Unga, which she has talked about, was one of those things that we were told. Within so many days, Unga is going to go down to so much. 70 bob. That's what we were told. Yeah. So, see, so we are dealing see, with the issues. Um, you see, we okay. you must be held to account for the things that you have said. That, what, is um, hurting, what is hurting, the, what is hurting the, 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 the hustler? First and foremost, of course, the turnover tax that you've talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, you've talked about... Um, the issue of the, uh, you know, there is other than the 16% VAT, which you obviously raise the cost of transportation, which affects all goods and services. There is also the advance tax on motor vehicles. Mm -hmm. Public service vehicles, the advance tax is going up from 60 shillings to 100 shillings per seat. Then when it comes to tonnage, when uh, the ones that do transportation <coughs> of goods, and that is uh, trucks and pickups, they are charging from 1,500, it's going up to 3,000 per ton. Mm -hmm. Those are things that are directly affecting the cost of transportation, which affects the cost of all goods and services. So you cannot tell us that uh, the, the, that is going to help the people. The, you, you, you know that they have proposed that uh, insurance uh, compensation, when you get uh, compensated for insurance on, um, you know, the payout uh, on insurance, compensation for supplies they will tax it you know going totally against the principles of uh, of, of, of taxation of, 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 of indemnity right. and and and, and at, at the end of the day for me what I think um, our big concern is that there are so many things that are affecting the common man mm -hmm. you are hurting the common man and that's why we are saying we want to reject these proposals because Kenya Kwanzaa rode on 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 uh, can I say lies Yes, you can show. say lies. Can because I say lies? Like okay. Because they're not okay. lies. Okay. 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 Uh, now, Sam, just on the now, aircraft now, spare parts, allow, let me explain something. Yeah. Just, just on the truth of the matter. Because there's the, the a point she's raised. I just Senator want to. Senator Sifuna and Honorable uh, Soro, there's so much feedback from you, but also there's so much feedback from the people. Yes. Let's take a look at that. R right. Babu Michael is saying that, uh, ask Senator Veronica, does it worry them that almost all stakeholders in this country are rejecting this affordable housing bill? I don't think all of them can be wrong on this. Are they wrong? Maybe there is something we don't understand that they know. 
All right. Ogeke Araka, please ask Honorable Osoro who comes first between his constituents and his position as majority whip? What if his voters are opposed to the finance bill? Rowell Mwamba, instead of building us those houses first, let them build schools in the north as an example. Then we will raise the money for houses. Okay. D. Wangoi, you're saying that Azimio are failing as an opposition. Instead of rejecting the finance bill 2023 in its totality, they should come up with an amendment. They then rally the troops as they seek a bipartisan majority. Take a page from Speaker McCarthy dealing with Joe Biden. And Dungu and Aina, the executive cannot raise money by taxation, borrowing or otherwise, or spend money without the authority of parliament. On Finance Bill 2023, MPs have clear choices. One, totally reject the bill. Two, reject parts of the bill. Three, introduce and pass major changes. Or four, combination of two and three. Now, it is 29 minutes past 11 o'clock. I want to take your final remarks, starting with your Honorable Soro. Now, members of the public should know that they elected a government. And when you elect a government, it's like you're giving the authority to somebody to lead you, for some, uh, to, uh, to somebody to lead you. And it's important for people to know that leaders take people where they ought to be, not where they want to be. It is where you ought to be. And that is the essence of leadership. If you sit down with your children today and you ask them whether they want to go to school, chances of them telling you that, hey, I'm tired of school, will be so high. And they'll complain of food, they'll complain of anything, the things that happen in school, assignments and such. And then if you as a parent go and you know, take such as an opinion, then you lose your children in future. And that is what we are discussing here. The president has the prerogative power. He's got the authority <coughs> and an obligation to make sure that this country is in the right trajectory and prepares the future for the next generation. And if he feels through the powers that you give, you, you've given him, that the housing, you know, a housing project is very important for the betterment of the future generation, then he has to make such very hard choices. And for us, we tell the public, support the president because you gave him the power. Okay. If he listens, I, I mean, really, you can't tell the president to listen to Sifuna. Sifuna wants him to fail because he wants his party leader to, to you know, to, to, be, to, to, to be president in 2027. I mean, really, it will not be genuine. <laughs> You wow. tell him to listen to uh, one of them. So for uh, me, uh, my point is this. <clears throat> a leader takes people where they ought to be. And that answers the question to somebody who asked me. Mm. You know, my constituents, constituents may oppose and such like that. I mean, really, do I go asking 100,000 people, each of them, do you reject or oppose? I mean, really, I'm the leader. I should tell them the importance of the housing. And by the way, I need those houses in my constituency because I'm the leader. I'll guide them ha at the opportune them? time. Have you told them? Yes. What are they telling you? I have you? told them. Of course, they are different, varying. Uh, I, uh, you know, as a leader, I convince people to my side. And I've managed to convince several, several <laughs> people <laughs> to my side. Because they know. <laughs> Especially Kisi, by the way. You know, okay. Kisi is a village slum. And it's, it's very important. <laughs> Land is not, it's inadequate. And yeah. I mean, really, in another 10 years, where do we build houses? Okay, Honorable Soro, you, your analogy, <clears throat> parents and children, presidents and the citizens, I mean, no, no, what I'm trying to say is this, that when you are leading a team, because you, they've, you've given, you've been given power, power belongs to the people, and these people have bestowed power okay. towards you, it, yeah. then do you again come back to them and say, hey, do I do this? Do I, no, 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 no. I mean, really, you don't do that. Okay, oh, all right, uh, Senator Sifuna. <laughs> you know, uh, Sam, it is only dictators who believe they know what is best for everyone, that somehow, because they were elected, they are this genius who know where the country is supposed to be, what you're supposed to eat, uh, who you're supposed to love, how many children you're supposed to have. We are not children, Osoro. We are not children. And the fact that you are elected, this election does not confer genius on anyone. In fact, many of us don't even understand what we are doing most of the time. Number two, my brother, I have no problem. I don't want William Ruto to ever listen to me. What for? He has his bishops, he has his uh, choir masters like Nausoro here. Let him listen to them every day. I am okay him not listening to me, but please, you cannot see Azimio in everyone. Kwame Wino comes here, he's an independent uh, expert in economy, you label him Azimio, dismiss him. Kepsa come to you and tell you this thing is going to tank the economy, you dismiss him and say they are Azimio. Kenya Association of Manufacturers, the bishops, everyone. You cannot dismiss everyone. As somebody has said here, we cannot all be wrong. Another thing, Sam, there is something called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 
You don't talk to me about furniture. I have not eaten. When was the last time you bought furniture for your house? <laughs> you can't come here and tell us, oh, you've reduced tax on furniture. We want to eat Vero. Stop telling us about this thing of, uh, of, of, of furniture and helicopters and IDF. How many Kenyans know IDF? You are reducing tax on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on rentals. How many people are landlords mm. here? Maybe it's just you and Osoro here who are landlords. <laughs> I am sure Sam has no house to rent. And then they say that one teaspoon of poison, just one teaspoon of poison in a cup of tea is enough to take you out. This one is a drum load of poison. <laughs> a drum load of poison in the well. And then you come and tell us, oh, Azimio does not see anything good. You tell us what is good, we will tell you what is bad because that is our job. As a, uh, as a, no, as a, and lastly, Sam, so that I hand over to uh, uh, my sister here. I want to say this. Kenyans know all of us. You know these characters. William Ruto has never built anything he has never built anything, and I dare anybody to tell me what he has built. If he did, we would be enjoying those six stadiums that he promised <coughs> us. He's not going to build you a house. Okay. Don't, don't agree to be lied to. All right, okay. Senator Sifuna. Now, uh, yes, first yes, of all, uh, Sam, Sam, thank you. First of all, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Senator Sifuna admits that uh, his being voted in as a senator of Nairobi clearly did not bestow upon him the genius position. And it's yeah, very clear in what, in what he said. I saying. don't know more than and the I people And I must also admit, mm -hmm. no one person has monopoly of ideas. And that's why we have something called stakeholders mm -hmm. engagement and participation by all citizens so that we can collect all those views by Kenyans. And what we have in uh, Kenya Kwanzaa and UDA is a listening government. If it was not a listening government, uh, those comments and those uh, inputs that have been given by stakeholders will not have taken a whole committee to Naivasha to consider and see what the Kenyans are saying. So uh, the government is listening and everything is being worked around. And let me also in inform uh, the <coughs> panelists here that those carpenters, for them to eat on Gong Road about the furniture, for them to eat the unga, they need to make the furniture. And I need to inform him, most of his, the people who voted him, right. they are on Gong Road making furniture. Those are the people we call hustlers. Maybe he doesn't understand. And he also needs to understand the rentals, the rental income. Most of those people on Gong Road are, do not own homes. They are on those rental spaces. And for rental spaces to work, once this tax is reduced from 10% to 7.5, it reduces the amount the landlord is demanding from the tenants. And most of those people who voted for him. It will not, yes, it it will will be, not reduce it. It will be automatic. You know it. It's a law, Sam. No, if no, it no. is I'm not talking named, about, is it automatic rent. to transfer the benefit to the tenants? So oh, we are happens. in a market economy, yeah. but we have no, a very no. pessimist group because this is how they no, do no, no. their operations. It's not about pessimism. I'm it asking is, you a question. Yeah. And That's I have responded, question. it is automatic. It is called market economy, Sam. Uh, Once you reduce a tax, the cost of that item goes down, and we have very clever business people, Sam. Competition drives the owner of that property <coughs> to push it to the point where the market is placing okay. it, Sam. I, I haven't finished, Sam. I'm just about to, to, to wind up. Mm -hmm. And then about uh, the aircraft uh, spare parts being reduced in that finance bill. I need to maybe once again inform my panelists that Business of repair of aircrafts moved to Ethiopia because of the cost of those parts in Kenya. That is what has informed the reduction of those parts so that that business can come back from Ethiopia, it comes back to Nairobi, and we can have a more vibrant trading uh, sector in the, in the repair of aircraft. So it's not just put there so All that right. people can buy VIP, but the problem is, uh, Sam, when people read a finance bill with a screwed, screwed, uh, skewed lenses which are skewed towards fitting a narrative, then they will never see the good. They will only see the bad part of okay. the finance bill. All right, Honorable Mbui, yeah, your Thank word. you. Maybe we need and, to and ask uh, ourselves. No, 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 Senator. My Sam, <laughs> maybe we need about uh, the no, superhighway no, no. and the road infrastructure, please. <laughs> Let me just say this. You know you called me on very short notice and I accepted to come. This is how you pay me back. <laughs> when the infrastructure and the SGL were being constructed, Sam, there was a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And I know there might have been issues with SGL that needed to be addressed and that will inform the next, the next uh, project on SGL matters. There was so much noise. But today, Kenyans are enjoying that infrastructure. 
what are we saying? Sometimes there is time for sowing and there is time for leaping. Mm. When you are sowing now, it may feel painful. But there is a day you will say, now I have a better service in a hospital. Okay. I have a better house. I'm not in a slum area. It's been upgraded. The social housing is working for me. I have been able to pay off, uh, you know, a tenant-owned purchase scheme. I've been able to pay at 2500 or 5000 And I have owned a home in Kenya when I wouldn't otherwise have owned a home. Okay. So I think people should be patient with the government and know right, it's going Senator, to be well. You made your point. Yeah, yeah, th you. Thank you. Maybe we need to begin by asking who owns choppers in Kenya because those are the beneficiaries of this, this uh, you know, taxation. People now, should ask Kenya, who repairs. Kenya Kwanza misled Kenyans by implying that life would be very, you know, would be rosy immediately after the elections. And they have continued, unfortunately, to ignore the voice of the public. Because even though you say that uh, they are listening government, we know that public have spoken and you still have continued to indicate that you will not uh, do what the public has asked. I want to advise Kenya Kwanza to stop divisive politics. Because in the run-up to the election, we were told it was hustlers versus dynasty. Immediately after, we were told it is shareholders versus non-shareholders. Now, when we raised concern about the 3% on housing, we were told it is salaried versus non-salaried. I mean, every day there is always one, one thing or the other that we have to fight about. And finally, can they kindly stop intimidating members of parliament? And uh, let me just say, we will reject that finance bill. In total. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I have to thank all of you. Um, I understand that now Senator Maina is called Vero. <laughs> Senator Vero Maina. <laughs> um, Honorable Robert Mbui, as well as Senator Edwin Sifuna and Honorable Silvana. So sort of making time for us to have this conversation. Of course, all eyes now turn to the National Assembly. We expect that next week the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury, that is Professor Njoguna Ndungu, will on Thursday a table, the budget estimates of uh, the financial year 2023-2024. He'll be reading that statement in the afternoon. We also expect that uh, early in the week, the Finance and Planning Committee will be tabling the report of the uh, Committee on Finance and uh, Planning on the Finance Bill 2023. <laughs> yes, Edwin Sifon, I've received your uh, submission. I mean, uh, the ruling from the Political Parties Dispute Tribunal. And of course, um, it talks about status quo, staying um, the decision that had been made earlier by the Kega faction, uh, sort of saying that at the moment, uh, Jeremiah Kioni remains the Secretary General. And of course, so much more continues within that former ruling party. My name is Sam Gituku, and this has been tonight. Good night. And then Mkalale.